Hey everyone, thanks for joining our webinar today. We're excited to demonstrate how to build beautiful and smart Confluence Cloud pages. I'm Brittany Sudlow. And I'm Jen Reich. We're both product marketers at Atlassian on the Confluence Cloud team. Before we dig in, let's cover some webinar logistics. We want this to be interactive, so please feel free to drop in questions at any point through the presentation, and we'll answer them at the end. We'll also be taking a few polls during the webinar, so respond to those as you see them. The first one should be up now, asking how you would rank your Confluence skills. You should also see some resources in a box below the Q&A section that we think will be pretty helpful if you have more questions. And most importantly, we won't take it personally if you don't finish the live webinar. We know that time is money, money is power, power is pizza, and pizza is knowledge, so we'll be sending a recording to you within a week. You ready to get started? This is what we're gonna be covering today. Create from anywhere. Beautiful pages. Work smarter, not harder. Sharing is caring. It can be fun. And Q&A. Brittany will be covering creating pages from anywhere. So in past webinars, we've gone over things like home, search, and settings. But today, instead, we're going to focus solely on the creating and editing experience. So we use Confluence all day, every day here at Atlassian. It's our main work source. So we gather the best tips from both Jen and I, as well as our colleagues to share with you. So did you know that you can create a page from almost anywhere you are in Confluence? I'll walk you through some of the key places. First, we'll start with this most obvious big blue create button on your homepage. Uh, the homepage is personally what I have bookmarked on Google Chrome because I find it, it speeds up the process of getting to any project no matter what space it's located on. Uh, if you click create while you're on the homepage, it will default create to your private personal space. That's my space called Brittany Sudlow. Uh, you can also create a page when you're viewing a different page. Just note that when you click the Create button, when you're viewing this page, you'll be creating within the space that this page lives in. So extreme travel here is this example. Uh, if you know you want to create a sub page of this current tours, for example, you can click the plus button and this will default uh, to nest this page under this existing page. Um, I typically create like a, a major project plan like this current tour that lists all the different tours and then I can link to sub pages within that. So if I have to build out emails and landing pages for the website and social media plans beneath, I'll nest those under this kind of major project plan. That's how I organize uh, using the page tree. Um, speaking of creating, you can also create on the go. So we have a mobile app and you can get to it by clicking that question mark and then clicking get the mobile app. Uh, it's also available in the Google Play or Apple Store. Uh, go ahead, we'll pause the webinar and wait for you guys all to download. Uh, quick tip, dark mode is coming soon for the mobile app. So it's exciting. Uh, and word of wisdom, remember that when you're creating a page under the space, just know that it will default the permissions to that space. Uh, or visibility, so you can change that by clicking the lock icon. Speaking of sharing, Confluence functions a little differently than some of the other collaboration products out there. We have what we call a publish mode. That means that you start a page in a draft and click publish to make it available to others. We've heard that some users get a little anxious about publishing because, well, it's public. Here are a few tips on how to hopefully calm any fears that you have of publishing. First, know that your drafts are yours alone. No one will know that you've created this page. In other words, no one will be notified until you hit publish. Keep it as long as you want, whether that's five minutes of actively editing, holding it over your lunch break, or overnight. It auto saves for you. I use my drafts for messy, brainstormy type of content that I'm not ready for my boss to see yet. I like having this option instead of other tools that have an always live view. Let's go ahead and click create to get started. Sometimes I'll start a page and then decide that I no longer want it, which is no problem. You can click delete unpublished page. One thing to be aware of is that if you just close the page, it will create an untitled blank document that will live out its days in your draft list. So for a workspace that would make Mari Kondo proud, make sure to delete it. If you ignored all of our previous tips on knowing where you're creating, we'll forgive you and so will Confluence. You can always move a page after you've created it, but before you've published. So hopefully these tips on the publish model help you write with fear and edit without mercy. Okay, but let's actually get creating now. The fastest and easiest way to get started is with a template. 
So rolling out now, you'll be able to see this uh, right rail on the side. So if you don't see it now, don't worry, you'll see it soon. Um, you can either just scroll and browse through the different templates. Uh, you can select a category like marketing and sales or HR. Um, you can hover over the template to preview it. Uh, and to, to pick which one you want, you just click on it to select. You could search for keywords if you know exactly what template you're looking for. Um, and notice that you also have the import option from a Word doc or Google Drive at the top. The great thing about templates is that a lot of mental power went into them. We had, we reached out to experts from every role and department to interject best practices and greatest hits. So HubSpot, for example, king of marketing content, built a creative brief and indeed built this hiring process template. Um, so you know it's infused and you can be confident with the material in there and know that you're gonna look like a superstar to your boss because you have everything you need for the best meeting notes. Um, Confluence is full of subtle tips to continue to help make sure you're on track, like the option to change the space that you're located in. Um, so you can scroll and browse and move the page this way. Uh, and if you're not sure where you're creating, you can look at this breadcrumb bar to see exactly where you're creating this new page. We have a really big blog culture here at Atlassian. So literally every new hire writes an introduction about themselves, what their career background is, their hobbies, photos of their family. Uh, we've been doing this for years, but we found it's extra critical during uh, remote work because of COVID-19. Uh, so we highly recommend you guys adopt this best practice. It's a great way to get to know people. Um, people also write blogs to share learnings from a research project they did or best practices that their colleagues might be able to take advantage of. You can select a blog post uh, through searching for blog and clicking this and it will convert the page into a blog that you can share. A uh, sneak peek uh, coming soon tip is we're going to be launching a new template gallery where you can will be another way to visually scan and search for your templates. Uh, but today we're just going to start from a blank page and show you how to take this page from zero to hero. Um, and you should be seeing another poll question popping up asking how you use Confluence today. Before we even talk about the editor bar at the top, I'm going to show you how you can do just about anything without ever lifting your hands off of the keyboard, thanks to the all-powerful slash command. The slash command allows you to search or browse any macro. Macros aren't as complicated as they sound, and they're not related to Excel formulas. Macros are added functionality beyond straight text. That can be formatting options like tables, layouts, statuses, or images. There are also smarter, more customizable actions like tagging team members and adding dates. You can even add a team as a whole so you don't have to individually write in all of their names to mention them. If you're new, I would recommend scanning this list for your next favorite tool. Or honestly, even if you're not new, I still find out about new macros I didn't know about all the time and I've been using Confluence for years. If you know exactly what you're looking for, you can just start typing it. If you're a technical writer, you'll start to memorize shortcuts which show up on the list. My most common ones are at symbol for mentions, two backslashes for dates, brackets for action items, and colons for emojis. To see all the shortcuts, scan the slash list or click the question mark in the bottom left. Okay, now I will talk about the editor bar. Uh, there are only a few options that live in the editor bar that are not in the slash commands and they're formatting things like bold, italics, and font colors. But you can do just about everything else with the slash command. Seriously, I could not go back to not having it. Sometimes I'll be in Gmail typing an email and think that slash works and it doesn't. So it's a really great fast resource to put any kind of content you want in. Um, so we've also got most popular items like action items, links, images, and emojis. And I hate to admit this, but I learned not too long ago that you can super easily with a couple of clicks create a custom emoji. So you can input your company's logo or uh, a emoji with a mask on it, anything you want. It's really easy to create a custom one. Uh, the plus icon is another great way to search for macros. Uh, it's just a different kind of view where you can search for boxes and see little previews of the macros. Uh, that box will be getting a facelift soon, so stay tuned. All right, now let's put pen to paper. First of all, let's start with the title. Right now, Confluence doesn't natively insert emojis in the page titles, but a pro tip that we use is to use your computer's emojis. 
For a Mac, that means Control, Command, and Spacebar. For a PC, that's the Windows key and a semicolon. When I'm trying to showcase a page, I usually start with a layout at the top so users can get a more above the fold without scrolling. Two should work here. You can adjust the width of this, which is helpful if you have a ton of content, but it's not usually something that I would suggest for the top of a page because it can feel overwhelming right out of the gate. I like to add an image as a banner. You can center align it so it looks like a true banner, or you can align it to a side and make the text wrap. You can also annotate to mark up the image or write alt text and, most excitingly, rolling out now, you can caption images to add more information. Now let's add a header with uh, an emoji to give it a little extra zing and turn some heads. That you can do directly in confluence with your custom emojis. Headers are important because this is what feeds the table of contents macro. It does all the work for you of creating a bulleted hierarchy so long as you designate header levels. So let's add a table of contents now. You're not gonna see it auto-populate in edit mode, but as soon as you publish the page, you're gonna see it on a big screen. And let's cap it off with a quick description. Before Brittany takes it over, answer poll question three now. What do you think your biggest confluence needs will be going forward in an increasingly remote world? All right, moving down the page, under this section, let's add an info panel. This is a great way to call out important information for the skimmers in your org. Uh, at Atlassian, we often use this as a summary section or what we call TLDR, too long, didn't read. Um, so depending on the urgency of your message, you can change the color of this box. So if it's a really big warning, I'll often make it red or if it's subtle, uh, I'll throw a yellow info panel in here. Um, great thing about this is now you can move this anywhere on the page that you can cut and paste it. So you just move your mouse to the corner until your mouse changes, you click it, uh, control X, and then move it up in the page. Um, I often like to put these at the top of a page when I'm trying to indicate that a piece is a work in progress. So uh, another pro tip for the publish model, I know this page isn't finished, but I want to start to get feedback or I just want it to, to exist so I can search for it. Um, just add this at the top as a warning for your coworkers. All right, next macro we'll add. Uh, as a marketer, I talk to customers a lot, so I often like to insert quotes onto my pages. Um, it just adds a really visually nice way to break up a page and add kind of more oomph behind your research. Um, I'll usually only add one or two on a page itself, and then I'll throw the rest in and expand. Just note, uh, expands on pages are when you're editing are always fully expanded, so you can see all the content and tweak it. Um, but when you publish, it'll default to a collapse mode and you'll have to click to expand. So that's a good pro tip. Um, I often throw extra data points in here. Uh, if I know people might want to see what kind of research I did and it's kind of a, a, a cover your butt often if you can add more details. Um, we'll throw in a quick divider and then Jen will go into the real meat of the page. We've gone over a lot of the aesthetically appealing macros that help draw the eye and showcase your work in a beautiful way. Now we'll transition to focusing on macros that add what we call smarts into a page. Things that if you insert them now, they'll save you time later. Before I start building a table, did you know that you can co-edit live no matter where you are or what time zone you're in? This is how Brittany and I work together while remote without necessarily needing to jump on a Zoom call every time we have a question or a comment. Co-editing and comments have always been lifesavers and especially right now that our desks are right next to each other. All right, let's insert a table. Brittany will be adding columns and rows as I'm talking. One of the best ways to work smarter is to keep people informed, which you can do with app mentions. If you tag someone on a page, they'll be notified via email and on Confluence at that mention. They will also be auto opted in for notifications about future page updates. This can always be turned off by stopwatch because you don't need to get a notification every time someone changes a comma. If you want to take that ownership a step further, you can assign someone an action item by tagging them next to it. You can also assign a date too. And we won't do that here because we have designated columns for people and dates. Action items you're mentioned on will aggregate to my tasks found by clicking on your avatar when not ending. You'll get notified when these boxes are checked. And let's add a date to this column and then statuses. The most common way I see statuses used with Lassian is not started, in progress, at risk and done. 
but people also mark which quarters they expect to have something done or just as numbers, which will show up better on a page than a regular numbered list. I almost always link out to other content on my project plans. Um, and this is my new favorite feature to help do that. It's, they're called smart links. Smart links are basically just a more visually appealing way to display a link rather than a long URL or, or an old school hyperlink. Uh, you can toggle between views. You can do a small inline view or a card view that has more details. And for some smart links like Figma, you can embed a view that's fully interactive, uh, takes up a lot of space on the page. Um, right now, smart links are available for Jira roadmaps, Figma, Dropbox, Asana, Bitbucket, Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, GitHub, but don't worry, we'll be adding tons more throughout the rest of the year, so keep an eye on community and our Confluence Twitter for updates on those. Um, speaking of staying up to date, the community and Twitter are two of the best places for you to learn more tips like you're seeing on today's webinar, uh, but also to find out about new features as they're rolling out. So give at Confluence a follow on Twitter. All right, but back to links. Uh, don't worry, we know smart links aren't always the way you want to uh, make a page beautiful. Sometimes you do want the traditional hyperlinking format. So if you paste a link in and click Control Z right away, you can default to this full URL view. Or if you want a hyperlink, you just highlight the text, click link in the top and then uh, in the top editor bar and then link that way and you'll get the traditional view. Um, since I just name dropped a bunch of our partners, let me name drop some more. Uh, the marketplace has your place for all apps and integrations. You can select server or cloud, Jira or Confluence, any different products. You can browse by categories of design, project management tools. We have everything you need. Um, and because people often ask what are the most popular ones we see Google Drive, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Zoho, Slack, Figma, Draw.io, and Gliffy. Those are the most popular apps, um, but you can see staff picks in community as well. Uh, the marketplace has extensions to connect these tools with Confluence, but they also have uh, the ability to extend existing macros on Confluence. So there's uh, apps that extend your, your tables so they function a little bit more like Excel tables, um, automatic header titles, and beyond. So go check it out. All right, so let's go ahead and add a quick header. So even though that we live and breathe Confluence every day and you can achieve almost anything with one or more of the Atlassian tools, we know that our users still use Google Drive. So we built a macro that events fully on a Confluence page with, wait for it, full functionality. I like to size these down, usually so they don't take up an entire page unless I want to full-blown edit it. When you publish it, you can view, edit, and format a Google Doc or Google Sheet without ever opening a new tab, which is a huge time saver. Because we're Atlassian, we also do this for our sister product, Jira. You can fully embed Jira roadmaps on a Confluence page too. And the same rule applies for Trello. You can insert an entire board or a single card. Just note that for Trello, you can interact like Google Drive and Jira when you hit publish. You can add new cards, comments, move cards, and all that jazz. All right, let's show our technical people a couple of things. Most of you know that you can enter a code snippet, but did you know that you can select the language too? And just like a text editor, when you publish, you'll be able to see corresponding colors for that language. If you're super efficient, which is what you all will be after this section, then this is gonna rock your world. You can insert a link to a page that doesn't even exist yet. If you want, or if you know that you want to create sub pages, for example, you can link to them now to save yourself a headache later. Just type the name of the page in brackets, followed by an open and closed parentheses. One final parting tip that I have for you is find and replace. There have been times when a project name gets changed on me and I would absolutely dread having to go through and change every single mention by hand. Luckily, we now have this option so you can search for a word and replace it every time. Awesome. Thanks for all those tips, Jen. Hopefully this quote uh, embraces everything you guys just learned. Um, but now I'll give you a little bit more details uh, about sharing in the published model. Uh, so a couple tips before publishing. Remember that it shouldn't be a scary thing. Um, and also you should be seeing a poll question right about now. What topics would you like to learn in future webinars that we can share with you? 
Um, but yeah, so before you publish, just know that you can preview the page so you can see what all your macros will look like. Um, and the first time you create a page, you won't have the option to publish without notifying watchers, but know that after you publish and you go back and edit, you, that option will be available to you, which is a great way. Um, so example, if I'm just fixing a minor typo, I don't need everyone to get a notification about that. I'll publish without notifying watchers. Um, but it, it is nice when people get a notification for a project that's maybe long term and they forgot to look at the page. So you go and make a few updates and they'll get that notification as a reminder that they need to do something on that project. Um, also, remember earlier how we said multiple people can edit at the same time. So if Jen and I were both editing this page, I would get a notification uh, pop up that Jen had published the page and that's totally fine. All of her edits and, and our edits that we've done so far will go live, but I am safe to continue editing. And when I publish, all of the changes that we made will go live. So uh, there we go, we just published. Um, now I'll talk about a few options in the expand menu. You have the option to view page history, which is great. So you can see all the revisions over time. You can actually revert back to an old version if I didn't like the edits. Uh, analytics is another great way to keep your coworkers accountable. Uh, they can, you can see who's viewed the page um, and all that. Uh, if you just want to share a portion of a page, you can hover over the header and you'll see that little pop up that you just saw. Copy the link and that will automatically scroll that person to the, that portion of the page when you share it with them. Uh, going back to the expand menu, if you didn't listen to any of the tips we shared earlier, you can still move the page um, or you can drag and drop it within the page tree that exists on the side. We've built this whole page with sample copy to save some time, but here are those same page elements with real content. That's everything on our end for today. Now we'll tackle your questions as they've been rolling in. We'll do our best to respond verbally or via chat to every question, but for the ones that we don't get to, we'll respond to in a community post, so stay tuned. Also, don't forget to answer the final poll question. How many features that you learned about today did you already know about, and how many were new to you? Okay. The first question we're going to answer is, will you share the recording of this webinar? Yes, we will be sending a recording via email in a couple of days. And we're also going to post an FAQ on the community, so watch out for that. OK, and I'll take the second question, which is, I'm on server. Can you highlight the differences between cloud and server? Yeah, this is a super common question we get. Um, a lot of what you saw today, because it was all in Confluence Cloud, are a lot of the features, so you should see some new ones if you're on server, but I'll highlight some of our favorite, most impactful ones. Uh, the editor is a really big difference. So the slash command, super easy, insert all your macros without clicking, huge. Uh, another improvement we did is we focused on macros, uh, being able to display in Confluence without having to open that dialog dialogue edit box. Um, so you can kind of see what it will look like when it renders fully in the page. Uh, smart links also a super important one, and we're going to continue to release more smart links. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, custom emojis, as we talked about, and saw some questions rolling in about um, everyone loves custom emojis. That is a cloud only feature. And then the new uh, the new templates preview. So that thing you saw pop out of the right side, again, this is rolling out now. So if you don't see it now, you'll see it soon in your instance. Um, that's also unique to cloud as well as a, a bunch of additional new templates that are available in cloud only. Uh, some commenting improvements is uh, in a comment, you have the ability to do the flash command. So you could enter an emoji or an app mention. Uh, you could also put a table in or a date if you wanted to within a comment. So uh, most of the macros in the editor and the slash command is also available in the comments now. Uh, inline comments in edit mode coming soon. Uh, and then at the top of a page when you've published it, you'll see this little comment icon. When you click on that, that'll help you identify all the comments on that page. You can kind of click through and quickly find all the comments on the page instead of looking for those highlighted lines of text. So that's also a really cool cloud feature that's pretty new. Um, 
for the home experience, which we didn't talk too much about, the top navigation is unique to cloud, um, as well as the improved activity feed. So the, the activity feed you'll see in your home has a lot more relevant content. It's been really helpful for me, uh, completely onboarding remote with Atlassian and still being remote to kind of keep tabs on what my coworkers are doing. Uh, there's also some more integrations in the cloud than on servers. So some of our favorites include uh, Google Drive, Office 365, Zoom, Dropbox, Soho, uh, but it, feel free to go to the marketplace, uh, click Confluence and click Cloud and you'll be able to see all of the apps and integrations available for cloud. Um, and then a couple really quick ones, page analytics is on clouds. Uh, there's some admin tools like admin key and then the mobile app on cloud is completely different from the mobile app on server. So be sure to download that, check it out. Uh, and there's also just some web pages that tell you a little bit about cloud. So atlassian.com slash cloud would be a really good place for you guys to go. All right, let's see what the next question is and Jen will answer that one. Okay. What features slash macros can help me with remote work? Um, this is a really good question because September for most of us was actually six months of being remote, if you can believe it. Um, so we have a ton of features ready for this because Confluence is all about teamwork and sharing knowledge wherever you are. So uh, one of my personal favorites is you can at mention to keep your team aligned and accountable on who's doing what. So these will aggregate under my task to help you stay on task. The info panel at the top of a page to get the highlights of info-rich Confluence pages, as we all know, we're doing quite a bit of reading right now, so that's super helpful. Um, slash recently updated will create a list of what's been worked on within your team. Uh, that way you don't have to go through and ping everybody to see what's been going on. Uh, likewise, you can do uh, status to update everyone on the progress of a task. Uh, you can also do co-editing live with a coworker, which is something that Brittany and I use quite often, so we don't have to keep doing video calls. And then inline comments for real-time feedback. So again, as I said, it has been six months, and we actually just wrapped up a campaign on Twitter, which is an aggregate of all of our best tips for working remotely. So you can look through all of the great tips that we've posted by searching hashtag six months remote on Twitter. Uh, and that is at Confluence. Great. Thanks, Jen. Uh, next question came in, I think, because of what we've mentioned before. When are inline comments in edit mode coming? Um, so those are starting to roll out now. Uh, so give it a few weeks. Give it the, the month of October. Um, we'll be slowly rolling it out to make sure everything works great. Um, but super, super excited about this feature. All right, that was a quick one. Let's go to our next one, which is, I haven't really used my personal space much. How would you recommend you use it? This is a great question. Um, not every company, uh, I mean, this is something we've been asked by multiple companies is people aren't sure uh, how to use it. So personally for me, my personal space is, is set to open for all. So anyone at Atlassian can go look at my personal space. Um, how do I use that? That's usually where I start project plans that I'm not quite ready to put in like my team product marketing space yet. Um, I'm not afraid to share the work in progress, but it's just kind of like a, a messy project plan and I'll move that page to my team space so it feels a little more official when I'm ready. Um, another way that I use this is uh, for performance reviews. So I'll create a page of you know my goals, my reflections on how I've done for performance, and then I'll lock that page down so just me and my manager can view it. There's not really any reason for that page to live in any other space besides mine, uh, and I feel confident that I have the control to lock it down so that only me and my manager can see that. What about you, Jen? Do you have any other tips for personal space? I do. Uh, something that I really like to use the personal space for is if I'm starting a meeting and I have some thoughts that I want to write down quickly, I will start a new page to take notes. Or if I have a thought during a brainstorm and I want to work through it on my own. Um, and then also, uh, when I first came on, I got a lot of links. And while you can go through and you can star important pages, you can refer back to. Sometimes you'll read a title and it's not super clear exactly what it is. Um, so I have one large page that has 
links that are relevant to my work and then it'll have a little blurb at the bottom of what I use it for or like how to go through and um, carry out a certain task, writing out the steps. So that has been super helpful. Cool, good idea. All right. And let's get our next, next question. question. There we go. Jen, do you want to take this one? Where can I find more resources and guides for learning more about how to use Confluence? Yeah, that is a great question. So we have a few places to refer to. Uh, the first is uh, edlassian.com slash software slash confluence slash guides. Uh, we will be providing that link in the email that we're sending out. So this is a collection of guides, tutorials, and demos. And it covers everything from the basics to in-depth best practices. Um, you can go through and just click around or you can follow step by step. It all builds upon each other. Uh, we also cover how to use Confluence with its sister product, Jira, uh, if you need to use project management. I'm sure we all do. Uh, we referred to this before. We have uh, community.atlassian.com. It's a ton of other users that can help you with your questions. Uh, they post tips and tricks for what works best for them. And you can also learn about new features as they roll in. And just to plug it one more time, because I run it, uh, we have our Twitter, at Confluence. So we have a lot of new feature announcements. We also resurface quick tricks, like keyword shortcuts that help with your productivity. You might not know about them. Uh, and we have announcements for more helpful webinars, like this one. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Jen. We'll go to the next question. Um, does Confluence have a mobile app? Yeah, so we touched on that a couple times today. Um, I'll dig into a couple uh, features, though. So we have it both for iOS and Android. As I mentioned earlier in the Q&A, it is different from the server one. So if you're not familiar with the cloud one, I'd highly recommend you check it out. Um, you can also, when you're on Confluence, click the question mark right by your avatar in the top right, and there's a link right there to get the mobile app. Um, we've got some super exciting features coming. A uh, little sneak peek, we'll have dark mode, which has been a highly awaited feature uh, in beta coming soon, as well as we're bringing inline comments to the mobile app, uh, which has been highly demanded and honestly something I use. So. Uh, as work has shifted and I no longer commute on a long bus ride to work every day, uh, the way I've been using the mobile app is it's from my couch or my lunch break, which I like to eat outside in my backyard. Um, just to kind of stay in the know, read articles in, in a format that doesn't feel like I'm on the clock because I'm sitting in front of my desktop, uh, but it's something that I want to read and I can drop a nice comment or uh, a like to kind of support and feel that connection with my colleagues. So. Uh, that's just how I've noticed that organically my work has shifted with remote work and how I use the mobile app for that. Um, all right, next question. Uh, Jen, do you want to take this one? It says, what tips do you have on finding my team's content and staying up to date on what they're working on? Another remote work question. Yes, we have two recommendations for this, one of which is the feed. If you go into your home page, you'll see on the right hand side that there is a rolling automatically updated list of newly published pages if they're updated, uh, as well as comments that people are leaving just to make it a little bit more visual uh, and easy to access. I also recommend using watch. So if you go to a page that you want to know whenever it has an update, you can click on the eye that's on the top right of a page so you can watch it. And every time that someone publishes an update, you'll get an email. And over to you, Brittany. Okay, let's get the next question up. What are some of the best ways to promote Confluence adoption for a company? This is another great question. A lot of times there's, there's a power user or maybe one team that's really feeling the juice of Confluence and how to use it, um, but it maybe is an adopted company-wide. Um, so, some of the tips for that is use the space template. We've got some if you're building a personal space, a team space, a knowledge base, documentation. So there's different options that kind of set you up for success of creating a brand new space. Um, and then what we do here is we create a page for everything, literally every project, every company announcement, every product, every team. So the Confluence team has a space within the Confluence product team, design team. If it's a really large project, That'll get its own space or just a whole hierarchy of pages. So 
we kind of like to think if it if you're tracking on different tools, say Trello or Monday.com or Smartsheet or one of these other tools, if it's a line item in that, it should probably have a, page, a space or a page on Confluence. Um, so if it's because we're open by default, if it's not on Confluence here at Atlassian, then it, then it doesn't exist. That's kind of how we treat pages. Um, on that note, just kind of using Confluence for all your company information. So we get updates from HR, our CEO and co-founder, uh, post updates, videos, or text, or you know, our CMO writes blogs about everything going on in the marketing department. Um, so just all company information is housed on Confluence for us. Um, another way you can do that is replace status meetings that you'd have on Zoom uh, or Teams uh, with a Confluence page. So. As we showed you, action items help aggregate my tasks. You can uh, assign dates and people. So instead of getting on a call and saying, hey, have you finished that report I asked you to build, you'll get an email as soon as someone ticks that box that they, yes, they have done that. Or you can comment on them and say, hey, this was due yesterday. Where is it? So um, we've often done that. I don't need to jump on a call and say, hey, where are you with that? Or even Slack them because it's right there on the page. That, that's the source of, source of truth. Um, Share news via blog. So as I mentioned in the presentation, we have all uh, all new employees write an intro blog that's super helpful. Um, it really has gotten adoption from new employees right off the bat. So it's really great if you can kind of instill that from day one at a company. Um, and then there's something we call the cake trick. So this was maybe a little more relevant in in-person time is uh, put on a page that there's a cake and then you have to go to you tell your employees to go to Confluence to find where that cake is. Uh, but in, in remote world, we've done that with free swag or an expense lunch. Uh, so we had an activity where it was kind of hidden on the page that there was a free lunch, but you had to go on Confluence to find that. So that's another trick. All right, I think that's all I have for you. And we'll, I think we've got time for one more question. Yes, um, so I'll patch that and pass it to Jen. Right. Can I upload video and interactive media to Confluence pages? Yes, this is one of my absolute favorite features about Confluence. I am a very visual person. And Confluence offers a slick media picker that allows you to upload files um, directly to your computer, Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, or Gliffy. You can also add images and videos by dragging and dropping them onto a page or using the slash command. I really like putting these into uh, tables, which just keeps it clean, but fun. Uh, you can also upload movie files. Um, uh, once you add the images to the page, you can easily address them. Uh, so you can in context, right, left, or center aligning and marking them to the right size. They're not overwhelming all your text. And uh, we're also bringing features to images, like adding image captions, so you can annotate images right in popcorn. Okay, that is about all the time that we have for our webinar today. We really appreciate you taking the time to view our presentation. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, we'll be following up after the event. And please look out for our follow-up email for a recording of today's presentation. Thank you for joining everyone and see you next time. Thanks so much, bye.